good evening to all so we'll uh, start the session today uh, regarding this uh, additive manufacturing so am i audible ah uh, yes yes you are audible ganesh thank you so much okay so let's sh share my screen over there so today we are going to discuss about the basics of additive manufacturing why there is a need of additive manufacturing uh, over your uh, traditional or the conventional manufacturing and what all the aspects need to be considered before you are going to print uh, any models. So what are all the issues will comes in and how to resolve that design issues and what are all the uh, parameters we need to monitor while printing and what are the process uh, uh, and that is a key process performance indicators and we'll, we are going to see about uh, the opportunities, challenges, and the applications of the additive manufacturing in different domains, right? So with that, we'll start the session today. So our course objective will be focusing on, uh, give you the basic or the introduction about the additive manufacturing or the rabbit prototyping uh, and its application to various domains. Uh, and it will uh, give you some uh, classification of different uh, types of uh, additive manufacturing processes. And it also provides some insights over your uh, geometric issues and, uh, uh, and how to resolve the geometric issues uh, during your 3D printing, right? So these are the ma major course objective. And the deliverables, uh, the outcomes of the uh, course will be uh, on, uh, so you can see here, so uh, additive manufacturing, uh, the basics uh, and the introduction about the additive manufacturing uh, and their advantage and uh, drawbacks clearly explained over there. And then you might have uh, able to uh, uh, describe the processes which are used in the additive manufacturing for a different range of materials and applications. And uh, you will be able to understand the role of additive manufacturing in the design process and its implications. And you can also be able to describe the effects of uh, surface finishing processes and uh, their microstructural properties and behavior for uh, components produced to be using the 3D printing, right? So these are the uh, course outcomes over there. So today's agenda will be uh, start from, uh, will uh, give you the basic uh, about the introduction to additive manufacturing and what are the different file formats which are used in the additive manufacturing and the slicing algorithms which are used in that uh, 3D printing and uh, design for additive manufacturing and the classification of uh, different additive manufacturing processes and uh, the surface finishing processes and printing defects and the post-processing techniques. Then finally, as I told you, the application challenges and return on investment. So we'll start from the introduction to additive manufacturing. Okay, so basically uh, additive manufacturing has started uh, in 1977 where the Kelly Svensson uh, patents the first uh, the additive manufacturing processes where he just uh, posit uh, the laser on the liquid plastics. So that liquid plastic is getting fused and make it some solid layer on that. So he identified and make it into the first pattern over there. The commercial printer will be started from Chuck Hull. So he, uh, he started in 1986. So he is focusing UV light on the liquid photopolymers and it will getting cured so, and that means it will creating the cross-linking layers. Then uh, he produced the first uh, commercial 3D printer over there in 1986. So he is the, normally we, we can call it, he uh, Hull as a uh, father of uh, 3D printing. And then in 1999, um, the 3D printing, uh, first medicinal regenerative medicine, uh, medicinal applications, we are started our first 3D printer. And in 2005, we have started the first functional furniture, uh, uh, which is designed by the French artist Patrick Join. And then 2013, it will be again, the splint has been produced to uh, save a life of baby. So medical uh, 3D print has started in 2013. And then 2017 onwards, uh, the FAA, uh, FAA has approved for the 3D printed titanium for its uh, 787 Dreamliner. So these are the, some of the uh, walkthrough about uh, the additive manufacturing processes. So what do you mean by additive manufacturing? 
So as per ASTM standard, so the additive manufacturing is a process of joining the materials to make objects from 3D model data, usually layer upon layer, as opposed to your subtractive manufacturing technologies, such as your conventional or the traditional machining, right? So we have to create the, we have to create the product by using the 3D models uh, with the help of layer by layer, okay? So it, this uh, additive manufacturing, it's a versatile technology, as I told you. So it can be used for throughout your product development life cycle. For initially, it will be uh, used for the pro prototype development. So normally what happened, uh, it is also called as rapid prototyping because uh, in the product develop, uh, development cycle, the prototype development is the very tedious process over there because it will reduce us, uh, it, it, it will take the, much of the uh, production lead time, right? So for that, to avoid that, we are, uh, we are using this 3D printing, which will be uh, uh, given the, uh, rapidly we can produce the, uh, the prototypes uh, in order to uh, test, okay? So for that, we'll, uh, we'll, um, we'll make this, uh, uh, we'll make this technology first initially. So hence it is also called as rapid prototyping technology, right? Then, uh, which we can also use for the fully functional end use parts also, we, which we can produce with the help of your additive manufacturing. So now, nowadays, uh, irrespective of the domains, all areas have been uh, used the additive manufacturing for the different purposes, right? So basically before going to uh, in detail about the additive manufacturing, let us see uh, some of the uh, why we need to use for the additive manufacturing. What is the difference between additive manufacturing with respect to your conventional manufacturing? Let us see here. So in the left, left hand side chart, you can see here. So the complexity of the part will be given as your X axis and your fabrication cost will be given as your Y axis. So when you say, when the complexity of the part is low, then your traditional manufacturing will be a feasible one, okay? When your complexity of the parts will get uh, getting increased, so in that case, your additive manufacturing product, uh, additive manufacturing process will give you the feasible one because traditional fabrication uh, for tooling cost will be more in the case if you having the any intricate shapes uh, which you are produced. So that can be reduced with the help of the additive manufacturing processes. So it will be feasible for the max, uh, the, comp uh, the complexity of the product is uh, very Ganesh, high. Yes. Are you, are you uh, sharing your screen by any chance? Yes. No, we are actually not able to see the screen. So, you you have not shared your screen. Sorry, sorry. Just a minute, sir. Just a minute. Mm -hmm. Can you able to see? Yeah, yeah. Now we are able to see the screen. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Miguel. Thank you. Can you able to uh, see my screen, right? Yes, yes, Ganesh. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Okay. So here you can see the left-hand side chart. So the complexity of the part will be given in x-axis and your cost will be given as in y-axis. So where you can see that, so for low complexity product, so your traditional way of uh, manufacturing is the one of the uh, feasible way. Technically, uh, as well as financially, it is a viable one. Uh, when the complexity of the pro uh, product is uh, increases, then your uh, additive manufacturing will be the most feasible one because of the cost of tooling will be higher in case of your traditional way of doing that, right? So. So, uh, so it can be used. So we can see that additive manufacturing can be used for the very uh, intricate shapes or any complex shape of the components. Like so, and then you can see the right hand side. So here we can give you that what may be the break even point. So in the uh, in the x axis we can give the uh, quantity of the product, and uh, y axis we can give you the fabrication cost. Right. So here when the quantity is reduced when the quantity is reduced means your additive manufacturing will be a better one. Say for example, it can be used for the personalized uh, products. It can be designed for one or two components. So like uh, we can say that any bio, uh, biomedical uh, or, uh, components or any prototypes, if you want to develop for only one time. So in that case, the additive manufacturing will be more feasible when compared with your traditional way of fabrication, right? 
so when the uh, traditional way of fabrication will be better if the quantity of the uh, number of products which are produced say for example if you are having the production line in that case what happen when the production is getting increased so so what happen the cost of the production will be reduced if the number of part produced uh, is more in the case of your traditional manufacturing but here in the additive manufacturing the cost of production will be high when the number of quantity is produced is more okay so uh, there will be small uh, break even will be there so in the uh, we are playing in between the uh, the two areas where additive manufacturing will be uh, serves better where it can be used for a small number of quantity with a, with a different customization uh, or personalization will be done and it can be used for only once so in that kind of the product we cannot rely on the traditional way of fabrication because it requires the much amount of cost involved in right so next we move on to that here you can see that uh, the product variety will be given and then productivity uh, uh, given in the y axis and the es will be given in your x axis say in the initial days uh, say for example in 17th century the customer production uh, number of people will be very low so and the production also will be uh, will be meet out their demands okay so where the customer production will be starts from in the early days the 17th century in the 19th century what happened so uh, due to the increase in the demand of the product okay so there is a need of uh, mass production okay in that case we are more relying on the traditional way of doing it so here the mass production will be so will getting maximum okay so and then your uh, product variety will be minimum in the case of your mass production where in 19th century you can see that uh, this is the second world war time so uh, after that so what happened your product demand will be more in that that case so you will get the maximum uh, mass production over there like in the uh, assembly systems the ford introduced to his assembly systems so what happened mass production will be started over there uh, when the mass production are started the product variety will be reduced okay then after year, after 1980 then mass customization will be starts so in the mass customization the productivity uh, will keep on uh, reducing as well as uh, in the meantime the product variety also will uh, comes into picture okay so we require more amount of product variety so when your product variety is increases means your productivity will drops in so the the people demand the customer demand uh, more product variety okay uh, so then the productivity will be keep on uh, uh, lesson up then uh, after 2000 so the mars personalization products will uh, will give you the more customer touch so in that case what happen you are additive manufacturing will be give you the maximum amount of uh, uh, product variety is introduced and the productivity will be still uh, reduces so we want to match this trade off between your productivity as well as the product variety so in the let us say for example in the green color which you have mentioned here it is the product variety where we can say that the product variety is uh, more if you have the uh, additive manufacturing in the case of your mass production or the productivity is in the traditional manufacturing so both the ends uh, it's meet out and we need to uh, bridging the gap between these two okay in the forthcoming years actually as i told you that the basic difference between these two will be given as uh, it is a shorter production lead time uh, in the case of our additive manufacturing so any uh, any product launch anything you want to make it in a very short time very sh uh, short span of time so where the additive manufacturing will be the better option when compared with your traditional manufacturing production lead time will be higher because uh, so before going to production we have to need to uh, concentrate on the tooling the tooling uh, time will be more in the case of your traditional manufacturing so that will take the longer longer uh, lead time so in order to avoid that uh, for a small prototype development and then we can use it for the additive manufacturing and you can see that low buy to fly ratio in the case of your additive manufacturing but here the buy to fly ratio will be higher in case of your traditional manufacturing let us say for example what is mean by buy to fly ratio buy to fly ratio is nothing but a so how much amount of money you are uh, invested to buy that raw material from that how much amount of material which are going to use it in the final product so that is the ratio between your buy to fl fly ratio that means so say for example we can say 100 grams of uh, raw material you are purchasing out of which 
20 grams only used in the final product. That means 80 grams of the material has been flied off, right? So when this uh, the, the, this material is a uh, maximum amount of materials has been flied off uh, from that raw material, so which we cannot use it, right? But the cost which we are invested is for the 100 grams, but we are getting only 20, uh, 20 grams the end product, right? So this this much amount of material has been wasted over here. So we want to reduce them with the help of your additive manufacturing, where we require only whatever the material, whatever the uh, comp, uh, sub, whatever the shape we require, we are taking only that amount of material. We don't need an extra material over there. Uh, that is not in the case in your traditional manufacturing. And the customization, see whatever the customization can be done with the help of your additive manufacturing. So here, even in traditional manufacturing, customization is possible, but the cost of customization will be very high. So it is difficult to customize the product, okay, for any one or two components and all. So it can be used only for your mass production. And as I told you, it will be cheaper to make your prototypes. Simply without any toolings, we can directly, uh, we can make the prototypes. But here in the traditional manufacturing, the tooling is also, it's a very expensive one, okay? So for that, uh, and using that, we, have, we need to make the prototype. So that will also be very expensive for each time. So when you're changing the design, you have small changes if you uh, uh, done. So that has to be, again, tool has to be made and then prototype has to be developed. So this will be very expensive process in the traditional manufacturing over your additive manufacturing. And the interlocking design is possible here. Say for example, you want a chain or any uh, lock and nut like that. If you have any interlocking designs, so that is possible in the case of your additive manufacturing. Here, no assembly is required. But in the case of your traditional manufacturing, separate assembling process is required because we require the part. Number of part has been increased in the case of your traditional manufacturing. So in the additive manufacturing, number of parts will be reduced. So as we studied about that design for assembly, so number of parts has to be reduced. We, we have to make a minimum number of parts because when you increasing the number of parts means the errors which are also accumulated over a period of time, right? So that has to be avoided. Hence, we are uh, rely on the additive manufacturing processes for these assemblies, okay? Okay, these are the, some of the generic AM processes. First, uh, we can see here in the, from the left to uh, right, so process one to eight. So the first one, we have to create the CAD model. Either we can create the CAD model by using the uh, design softwares, various design softwares. We can use it uh, like uh, any uh, like SolidWorks, Creo, uh, Katia, and different 3D CAD, uh, CAD, CAD modeling softwares, which can be used to uh, create the 3D models. Or I, we can use it for the reverse prototyping. Say, for example, we can use for the 3D scanners to obtaining the uh, 3D images, uh, 3D uh, model of your uh, uh, path. So by obtaining that, after after getting your CAD model, you have to convert that CAD model into STL file. So conversion of the STL file will be takes place. So here the per, uh, so once if the STL file, I will explain what is STL and why it's required. So we need to convert the model into STL file format. From that, this file uh, STL file format has been sent to your machine. Okay. So where the slicing operation will be takes place and then machine setup will be explained. Now see, I will explain later. Okay, at the end of the session, I will explain, right? Okay, then uh, from that machine setup, we are going to build the uh, prototype. We have we build the model, right? So we are using the, uh, uh, by setting, adjusting the uh, machine temp, uh, parameters and we are building the model over there. Once if it is model has been done, it has to be removed from the substrate. So this will be given as your substrate and this is your model. So model has been removed from your substrate over there. So once the model has been removed, we need to do some post-processing activities because suppose for example, you want to make a cup. So in that cup, no, so small overhangings will be there. So small intricate holes will be there. So that has to be covered with the help of some support structures. So that support structure has to be removed. So that process is known as post-processing, okay? So once if the post-processing has been done, we can go for your surface finishing and the final application. It will go for your final 
application. Likewise, this is the generic additive manufacturing processes. So as I told you, so after obtaining your CAD models, we can translate that CAD model into STL file, right? Why there is a need to convert this CAD model into STL file? What is meant by STL file? So we'll see that. So STL file normally, which will represent the 3D model by approximating its surfaces by using the multiple triangles. So you can see here in the right side wireframe. So whatever the model which you are given, so that can uh, that will be converted into uh, multiple triangles. Okay, equal equal and multiple triangles over there. So these model has been converted into these triangles can be converted into 3D networks of points, edges, and the faces. And this meshes defines the internal volume of your given model. And you can see here, this is the one face that will, which will be uh, derived from that. This is the sample STL file format. So once if the uh, file, uh, once if you given that model, what happened, it will start it from the solid model. So it will be solid model print has been started. The face at normal will be, this is the face at normal. The face at normal will be given the appropriate vertex size. So it started from the 0, 0, 0 and one axis. Uh, then it will having the first facets on 0, 0, 2. And then it will be on the uh, X, X, Z plane. It will be on 1, comma 0, comma 2. So three planes will be there. So here, uh, three axis will be enclosing this one face it or single triangular faces will be there so outer loop has to be created first one so normally this will be come in the outer outside of your part outset normal will be always will be taken care uh, while you are uh, making your stl file format so that is the advantages of uh, creating your stl file formats then vertexes will be given as 0, 0, 2 first then it will be given as 0, 0, 0. then it will be given 0 uh, sorry, one zero two. Likewise, it will be uh, first facet is created again. Second layer will be created on one another. Likewise, each facet has been uh, once the facet has been finished, it will be the first loop will be closed. N loop will be given. Then the N facet has to be given. Again, the second facet will be started over there. So, likewise, each layer has been printed one by one through this way. Okay. So any number of uh, any number of layers can be printed by using this uh, STL file format. Uh, so what are the other file formats will be there? Is it only STL file formats uh, is there? No, we have the different many many number of file formats are available, but uh, most most of the file commonly available file formats will be STL file, OBJ, AMF, and your 3MF model. So these are the some of the file format which are uh, mainly used. In addition to that, different uh, platform, design platforms, different softwares are used in the different file formats. Okay. So what are the problems uh, we are we are getting while uh, converting your STL file formats? Okay. So there will be two major problems which are associated with your STL file. Okay. So another one thing I want to uh, say that STL file, uh, which will be used only for the uh, mono colors. Okay, so for only one color, if you want to take the uh, for take that, we can use it for your STL file format. OBJ, we can use it for the multicolor formats. The color information also will be stored in the dot OBJ uh, file formats and other advanced file one like uh, uh, 3MF. So all the file format will be for uh, for used for the different uh, color format storage also. And as I told you, what may be the uh, problems uh, which arises during the conversion? First one, problems in the distribution of the polygon network. Second one, structural defects in the model. So there will be two errors may, may comes in the in your design. So for, first one is either the polygon is not the di uh, distribution in evenly uh, throughout the model. Say, for example, I can say polygon that, uh, that can that collide with each other or we may get the detached polygons that may float in the space, or we can say that our fund polygons are lack of polygons in a certain area. So, so that will create the hole in that model. So this, these are the things we need to consider, right? Another structural defect will be given as like holes in the model or number of elements in the model that collide each other. So certain things I, I will explain what, what are the different file problems are there. Okay, how to resolve that, we'll see that. 
So what are the different STL5 problems? First, we'll see the noise cells. Noise cells are the smaller cells which we, which we cannot uh, make it into full-fledged model. So that will be an unused one. So it is, it is a useless one. We cannot use that. So we, we need to avoid that noise cells by clearing out, right? And we have the intersecting and overlapping triangles, triangles will be there. So let us say, for example, we have the cross X, X like structure. So in that case, what happened? It will be intersecting or overlapping, overlapping triangles will be there. So that should be avoided. These kind of the decision needs to be avoided over there. It, it has to be manually repaired or we have the separate automatic repair softwares are there. Boundary edges, boundary edges, small, holes which are created, the boundaries are not closed over there. So then we created the holes in that. And we have the non-manifold edges. Uh, say for example, if the two um, cubes are, if the, if the cubes are there, the triangles has to be uh, in the shared with it to either either side of the cube. But it, some, of the, some of the time what happened, no? the edges will not be, the edges will not be shared by the uh, two cube or uh, two triangles at the same time. So say for example, one uh, triangle may be a larger and another edges will be very small, shorter. So in that case, we cannot use it. So these are the uh, problems or the errors. We can call it as the non-manifold edges and colliding surfaces, polygons, over-refined mesh. We, we can also, we cannot make it into over-refined mesh. Even the quality of the product will be same. If you refining the mesh, uh, um, more that means what happened the the, the timing uh, the uh, print time will be will become more but it will give you the same output what you are having in the uh, refined mesh itself and inverted normals certain uh, certain things we have the flipped normals we are getting it uh, so these are the some of the uh, errors in the design errors will be there in that okay so how to avoid that we have two ways either manually we can correct it or we can having the uh, some auto resolver. So we have the some auto repair softwares are there. So in that way, we can um, we can eliminate all the major errors. It will fix up all the major errors like whole separate cells, intersection and all. So we can see that. So what are the other ways we can do that? Either uh, with the help of some stitching or the manual repair, Either say, for example, if it is isolated triangles, we can delete it and creating the new triangles. If, uh, we can delete the triangles. Or if, if there is a gap in that, we can create the new triangles over there, remeshing to so certain things. Uh, we can we can make it in there manually or by means of the auto, auto uh, repairs. Okay. So where we can see that advanced STL repair softwares are available. So we can say Mesh Mixer, Mesh Lab, Magix, Blender, NetFab. So like these are most of the softwares are uh, open source and free softwares like NetFab and all Autodesk software. It is a free for student uh, educational version. Blender is a open source. Magic have the some. Uh, it is a one of the. Uh, it can be used for professional. It, it, they will be charging and free so free version also will be there. Same ways we have the different uh, machine software repair um, STL repair softwares are available. You can see that models. Say so first STL models with having the different uh, holes in that. So that will be repaired with the NetFab mesh mixer. Okay, you can see the difference of different software which are used in. So which is finer and we can use that one and export it to the uh, STL and that will be given to your printer. So that these errors can be, uh, will not, error will not come in your final printing. And then once if the STL file format has been done, we have to create, we have to go for your slicing. What is meant by slicing? Slicing is nothing but the set of instruction has to be given to the machine in order to uh, printing the 3D model. Okay. So for that, what we are doing is we are getting the 3D model in the different in the, in the, in the file format, which I told that. So from that, what happened? We are using the, some slicing softwares. So using that, you are creating the tool path files. Either we may use for the G codes. So our X3G, some, some of the file tooth file formats we, which we are using to creating the path file. Okay, tool path file. So normally, uh, simply we can say that a slicing as a, a sli uh, slicing a 3D drawing translate the 3D drawing into your language that 3D printer can understand with the print. Okay, so it has the set of codes in it. Okay, so these are the co uh, commercially available slicing software. We can have Freeform, Slicer, Cura. So these are the some of the uh, commercially available slicing software. Sir.
So then design for 3D printing. So what all the factors need to be considered before going to print? Okay. So first one is part orientation. Let us say, for example, if you say, for example, this kind of the uh, product, you want to make it. Okay. So you can make it either in the horizontal way or in by vertical means. Okay. So if you make it in horizontal way, the product time or the, uh, it can be easily done. It can be quickly uh, getting your product. Okay. So the part orientation will give you the, that maximum time taken. Okay. And the cost also. So you have to carefully uh, choosing the part, whether how, how it can be oriented, whether it may be horizontally or vertically. So that need to be uh, taken care of first. Then support structure removal. Either we go for any solvent based or we can go for your uh, manually. So accordingly, uh, you have to create the structure, how to remove the structure, uh, st structures. So in that way, you have to, you have to select this uh, design, right? Madan, I will explain. Okay, at the end of the session, I will give you the Q and A, no issues. For all of you, uh, at the end of the uh, session, I will ask, I will tell you all your, uh, I will address all your doubts and I'll clarify your doubts, okay? Thank you so much. Then hollowing of parts. Suppose if you are giving any hollowing of the parts, so you have to give, so mostly you have to use for the horizontal hole instead of having the vertical hole. So you have to reduce the uh, vertical hole and increases your uh, horizontal hole, which, which can be processed in an easier way. Okay. And the inclusion of undercuts, you have to say what may be the uh, gap where we have to go. So undercuts has to be as much as big as possible. So any intricate shapes, any undercuts, which is very smaller while processing, it will be getting difficulty. And the interlocking features also, you have to give you the small tolerance, part tolerance has to be given for the moving. And part count reduction for assembly and all, you have to reduce the number of part count over here. Identification marks, which we are given. So that should be legibly uh, uh, given. So, so it, it should be given in the different uh, way. Okay. So that it will, it can be printed in a easier way. Otherwise it, it said that it, it will not identify that letter, whatever uh, you are marking in that. So marking and lettering has to be given in a separate manner. Okay. So these are the, some of the things you have to given that say, for example, you can say aspect ratio, bridging distances, it should be very small. Uh, uh, here, the, the gap between the bridge should be maximum, but the height should be as minimum as possible. And support wall as we have to give a minimum support wall has to be given. If the two walls are uh, separate walls are there, that should be connected with the minimum support walls. And then uh, overhang angle should be maximum overhang uh, angle should be uh, like uh, you have to design. So you cannot make it uh, more than 45 or in that case, what will happen? It will, uh, it, the support structure you require is more. Then the design will also be, uh, so the errors will be thrown out. Okay. So you have to design in such a way that it will reduce the overhang because the post passing will be, takes very much time. And these are the uh, 3D uh, printable filament materials. You can see the ABS. Uh, these are the polymeric materials, as, as I tell you. So ABS plastic, so which can be used with the most commonly used material in the in 3D printing. So it can be used for because of uh, cost, low cost, and uh, impact and uh, wear resistance. So and it will good heat resistance. So these are the some of the properties. And the cons is mainly it will uh, produce toxic fumes over there. And uh, warping is a major impact, uh, major problem with the ABS. And it requires the separate ventilation while doing that in the ABS, okay? Because it will give you some toxic, uh, releases some toxic gases while heated up, okay? And separate heat, uh, heat uh, heated bed is required over there. And the temperature hardware requirement is, uh, when you're using ABS, you have to, first you have to think that, so what may be the temperature which has to be operated? So it will be operated around 95 to 110 degrees centigrade. So you have to check your, uh, the manufacturer specification of that printer, okay? And then build surface, uh, we have to give, uh, use it for cap uh, uh, tape or ABS slurry and extruded temperature will be around 2, 220 to 250. Why there is a need of bit temperature is, suppose for example, for initial design, so the temperature, due to the temperature dif difference, the addition of the first layer will not be uh, as good as possible. As, as uh, so we cannot use it for the first layer. First layer is very difficult to print over there when you're using ABS material without a heated pad. 
okay so what happened here so we are melting uh, around 220 to 250 degree of this uh, abs uh, filament then the the heated pad the what is was substrate so that is also be heated around 950 to 100 so that it will reduce the heat transfer so it will be easily flow the material will easily flow and it will be stick to the your uh, your substrate in a easy manner so that is the purpose we are maintaining the temperature okay in the heated and enclosure is required because as i told you it will be toxic fumes will come in and cooling so cooling is not required it initially when due to the because of high temperature it will be cool uh, cool down in a easier way so so likewise we have the different materials are there another one is polylactic acid most of the 3d printing uh, uh, which are uh, sold now they are using for the uh, pla filaments or polylactic acid filaments so which will be biodegradable which is uh, made from the cornstarch or some of the biodegradable materials so it will providing the stiff and good strength and good dimensional accuracy and uh, it will provide a good shelf life okay and the one of the major drawback will be low heat resistant so when when you uh, when the temperature is rising up it will be going to melt okay so it cannot be suited for your outdoors so where the sunlight is exposure okay uh, then here also the uh, the initial uh, the bed temperature is required around 45 to 60 degree and the build surface can be given glass plate or glue stick uh, paint adhesives which can be used as the your uh, build surface and then we can go for your extruded temperature which will be 190 to 220 and here the pot cooling is necessary because as i told you it is not stable when the temperature is rising up so it has to be immediately cooled down okay so for that uh, we require the separate cooling arrangement uh, high, say for example you can say efficiency of the fan should be 100 in the case of your pla if you are using as a filament material and the case of hips okay high impact polystyrene so where is the light lightweight material most used for the dissolvable support structure over here okay so mainly it can be given for impact and uh, uh, wear resistant and it is also be moisture resistance and it it can be very lightweight and uh, uh, one of the major drawback which will be given is uh, the temperature operating temperature will be very high and it also require the separate ventilation okay and heated bed is required as we see in the abs same thing here also heated bed is required and the temperature has to be maintained around 100 to 115 right and it will be built surface can be used for the glue sticks and glass plates the uh, operating temperature or the melting temperature will be 230 to 245 uh, so pot cooling is not required again the temperature range is higher so when it comes down to the room temperature it will be uh, solidified easily so same way we have the pet and we have your carbon fiber filaments so carbon fiber filaments which are mainly used to getting the uh, increased stiffness and good dimensional stability and the lightweight components so we know that right the composite carbon fiber composites and all so same thing here what happened the pla the short fiber PLA has been uh, the PLA is melted and that uh, carbon fiber filaments has been uh, short uh, chopped and then mixed up with the PLA uh, uh, base and then that will be uh, used to do making a uh, filament okay so in that way we can use it for the carbon fiber as your filaments so the main uh, uh, cons is it will be having the higher brittleness okay and it has the tendency to clog the nozzle. So frequently the nozzle will be clogged. You require the separate uh, thing. And another one thing is increased using. Using is nothing but a yes, filament um, is passing in between the two uh, gaps. So that will be there. So it is also called stringing or oozing, which will be there in, in the, these are the, some of the drawbacks of your carbon fiber uh, filaments. The operating bit temperature around 45 to 60 degree. Again, the build surface may be, uh, painted tapes or PEAs are the glass plates. Extruded temperature will be around 200 to 230. So like uh, say polypropylene, same thing. So we can use PP materials uh, for good impact and fatigue resistance. And uh, the major uh, drawback is warping and uh, it, it is expensive, okay? So, and operating temperature is required, uh, 85 to 100, the bed temperature and then extruded temperature will be 220 to 250. So same wise, we have the different printable materials which are used for the different uh, applications. And it has the own, uh, uh, their own pros and cons. 
wood filaments mainly used for the decorative items okay we can use for the wood filaments for the different like uh, car car the shortest which are used or which are uh, mixed with your pla based material okay and we have your me metal filaments also will be there like we have the fine metal powders like copper bronze and all getting the metal finish so getting the metallic uh, uh, finish or heavier uh, structure you require in that case we can use it for the metal filled filaments then these are the basic classification of ASTM uh, additive manufacturing processes as i told you so we have the different uh, processes will be there for different purposes we can we can classify it according to that say for example uh, based on the energy required we can start from the vat port of polymerization then go for your material jetting material extrusion binder jetting then powder bed fusion then sheet lamination sheet lamination then it will go for your direct energy deposition which is require the high energy where vat poly photopolymerization will require the lesser energy okay so based on the energy uh, consumption we can make it the vat photopolymerization the first one and uh, ded will be a direct energy deposition will be given at the last and second you can see here uh, in the case of your vat photopolymerization or we can also call it, it as a seriolithography where we the vat is filled with the, the photopolymers okay so simply we can say that liquid photopolymer which is cured by the light okay light source their light source may be uv light source or light source can be used as a lasers so depends on that we can use different type of lasers so what happen when the uh, liquid photopolymers are exposed to light so that will be getting solidified and it will be getting fused okay so you will get the required shape in it so the scanning galvanometer will moving so accordingly what happened the laser will be focusing in the different areas so the spot size as well as the speed of the laser light which will create the the timing the print time uh, of the your model so every time so uh, say for example first one uh, when the laser light is exposed in the first time it will be queued off again the, the platform will be lowered again this will be filled up with the liquid polymer once again again uh, the laser will, light will be focusing on the as per the model which which is sent to the 3d printer so according to that uh, model the laser uh, spot will be focusing and it will be curing that uh, photopolymers likewise each and every layer once the layer is getting cured it will be lowered next layer will be formed likewise it will be taken up by one by one so material jetting so here there will be two materials uh, will be given so the uh, the material jetting what we are using is here so molten thermoplastic deposited through uh, sir so here we can having the two different materials one is your build material another one is your support material so these two materials are uh, go through this the nozzle so in that case what will happen it will be uh, heated up so that heated material will passing through this uh, based on this dimension and it will getting your structure over here so every time so once if the first layer is finished second one is uh, uh, this will be leveled this this can be used for leveling that uh, surfaces again the second layer will be given so by layer by layer it will be formed so each and every time once the layer has been completed next one it will comes in likewise the droplets which is also called as uh, uh, every drop will be uh, like your inject inject printer and jetting same same principle which will be given in your material jetting and binder jetting where instead of having the wires which will be fused off uh, what happened here is uh, we are using the powders so the powders which are spreaded across your uh, platform so the roller which will be coated the powders evenly throughout this one now again uh, there will be a uh, separate uh, layer will be given so in that the droplets of the liquid uh, binding agent will be deposited on the bed of granulated materials uh, which which is sintered with the help of some uh, different sources say for example laser sources or we can high energy beam sources which will be used to uh, cure duff so likewise each each layer has been builded up so every time the roller will be used to leveling the first surfaces and then the second layer will be uh, the powder will be coated once again again 
this will be a uh, queued of again it will be goes like this the flat form will be loaded for each uh, each time and then your powder stock will be goes up up in the e each time okay likewise it will be build it up for each product so binder jetting we can say that we can use it for the uh, a few the, the powders has been fused with the help of the some liquid uh, adhesives and that will be spreaded across your powder forms and the ftm ftm mainly used a, 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 this is a commonly used to print out mainly we can use it for the home or desk or desktop printers so where we can the uh, we can use it for the wires so these wire, wires are the filaments which are comes through the uh, filament spool and that will be given um, extruded uh, through this uh, extrusion head so where it will be heated up so both the sides of your uh, filament we have the separate heater will be used so the heater will used to lick uh, melting this filament and that the melted uh, fil uh, filament is passing according to the design on the each layer so every time when it goes on it will move moves up the nozzle head will moves on in the z direction okay in, in upward direction so build platform will be same but your nozzle uh, your extruder head will be moving in the z direction z plus direction okay in that way uh, each layer has been finished in the fdm or material extrusion simply we can say that here the thermoplastic is deposited through a heated nozzle so here you can see that right so nozzle may might be given so accordingly we can say filament diameter which will be used 1.75 mm we have different type of filament diameters are there so we have to adjust uh, based on your uh, size of your nozzle so probably most probable cost will comes in this printer is a nozzle will be getting clogged so this has to be removed with the help of the additional means and sls will be given so here uh, selective laser sintering will be uh, there the powder with uh, powder will be coated over there um, by using the separate uh, laser it will be uh, sintered so the material has been sintered according to the design so once if the first layer has been finished again second layer will be uh, the powder will be spreaded across the platform again uh, this um, laser is focused on the particular uh, area where you will get the uh, sintered at the next layer likewise each layer has been printed out so sheet lamination it is a solid uh, type of 3d printing where we can use it for the uh, papers which which can be used to, to creating the models so each layer the uh, it will we are stacking the each layer of paper so first one layer of paper which will be given so the we can use it for the some laser material so that will be cut it off on uh, one layer and it will uh, next layer which will be given uh, uh, given to one another and the, it will be fused off likewise it will be stacked on one another you will get your final material with the help of a, a two rollers one one end will be material supply and another one will be given where excess material has been collected over here and we can get it this is in a solid form okay so any uh, 3d paper uh, the, the papers can be used to, to making this sheet laminations and a direct energy deposition types we can have two different types either we can uh, based on powder based or we can say that wire based uh, based on the energy source we can classify it into three either laser based or electron or plasma based so we can see here so we have the separate uh, robots will, which will be given on the one side we have the power source uh, uh, which will be used to, to uh, given it's like welding process where you will get the instead of filler you have the metal wires in it okay so it is this base substrate over here so that will be melted up okay with the help of the heat uh, heat which is generated from the power sources and that will be melted up and you are getting like welding like structure layer by layer it will be making up a uh, metal like uh, metal products over here and uh, the when when compared with your uh, other conventional uh, additive manufacturing the we can we can deposit higher amount of material over here okay and we can uh, the lesser time it will take to produce the component so metal can be uh, manufactured with the help of these processes so th likewise the product will comes in so each layer will forms in you can see that for how many layers will be there it depends on that 
what may be the uh, depends on the size of the layer also you can determine okay so based on the filament size uh, your uh, layer size will also be determined okay you want a very thin layer or you want a uh, you want a, a quick processing time so accordingly you can select your filament size and according to your nozzle size also you have to uh, you, you have to select your filament so post processing normally what happen you have to removing the support structure in the two way either we can go for your standard mechanical means with the help of pliers and other cutting materials which which are used to, to cut down the unwanted material portion over here or we can use it for the some solvents so we can use it some solvents to removing the support structures so pve and all we can use the water as a solvent or some of the materials we can use for the algal as your solvent materials so in that way we can removing the support materials so then you can go for your surface finishing different surface finishing processes as we uh, know that so each will be produced uh, the product will be produced layer by layer it will having the staircasing effect or you can see here so some layer will be formed right so this layer has to be avoided it's not aesthetically good right so what we need to do is we need to removing this uh, layers with the help of different methods so, so for example if the material is polymer you can use for the sanding or gap filling polishing painting or vapor smoothing or dipping epoxy coating some metal plating so these are the some of the techniques say so sanding and all we can see using the emery sheet you can remove that uh, layers uh, markings okay with the help of sanding or we can you go for your polishing or with the help of some painting uh, dipping something we can make it to getting the uh, polished surface over here in the case of metal means we can go for your short painting or we can go for your vibratory finishing tumbling or electrochemical or we can go for your uh, uh, grinding like abrasive flow machining or isotropic super finishing so we can use for the different processes for the metal and uh, uh, so and a different process for the polymers so these are the common 3d printing defects will comes in so for example at the start of the point at the start of the printing uh, material will not extrude over here and some of the times what happened uh, next one these are the defects will comes in because of the first layer is not fused perfectly because the bed temperature is very low in that case what will happen due to that it will not adhere uh, properly with your base uh, base plate okay so due to that you will get your uh, structure like this sometimes what happen uh, when you operating at very low temperature you will get your under extrusion will comes in okay so that is the problem you are getting in the so some of the things you are not uh, getting extruded properly because of the uh, low temperature and some sometimes what happen the temperature is higher operating temperature is higher if we don't know what may be the operating temperature if you are setting higher so in that case what happen you, it will be over extruded so so melted so many things the drafts will find it in your final product over here and uh, in the gaps in the top layer in some of the material um, product what you are having is you are getting the holes in it in the top layer you will finding some holes over here okay so this is also because of the temperature uh, differences between this one and the filament what you are choosing and infill infill percentage what you are selecting it is also depends on that and oozing as i told you different materials say for example if you are using uh, uh, abs uh, and we are using petg so pet materials and all we are getting the using because of these um, uh, carbon fiber filaments or uh, some materials which we are using getting the uh, using using is nothing but you can see that this is the model and here uh, another model so there will be small connection strings are there small strings are there so that has to be removed so these are called as stringing or oozing so this has to be avoided so either maybe uh, by setting the proper operating temperature over here and the overheating because of the overheating at the end of the product what will happen no it will be getting collapsed on the top surfaces because of the the size will be very limited or very thin so because of that it will getting overheating it will be collapsed on the one side uh, because of the uh, in, improper setting of the machine the layer machine has been shifted from the one part to the other so initially it will be uh, doing like this but because of the some adjustment it uh, the print head will be moving certain offset and it will create the another layer so it will be create layer shifting will be done because of the offset which will be given on your machines and the layer separations so if you are given th thin surfaces or you are uh, you are producing very long 
um, vertical surfaces. In that case, layer separation or splitting will be a common uh, defects will come in. So uh, you have to try to understand what may be the manufacturer recommended uh, height. So you have to do in that only. Okay. So increasing the height will cause us this kind of the problem and uh, selecting the optimum temperature and the filament quality will also reducing this uh, separation or splitting. And some of the time the filament, no, we are getting the grinding filament or we can say some of the uh, filament and the edges will be eroded over here. So this uh, kind of filaments while checking visually, you can see that. So this kind of the filaments, you should not use it in your uh, 3D printing. And uh, what may be the process parameter will be given process parameter may be and uh, depends on the power source. What may be the power source which are used either we may use for the uh, lesser energy or it consumes more, more, more energy. So you have to select what may be the power source which are used in that. Okay. And the infill percentage whether whether we require the 100% uh, infill or we require the 10% uh, 20% infill infill is nothing but what may be the inner portion inner portion has been covered okay say for for example if you infill is 100% means you will get this solid part if infill is 0% means you will get hollow part 10% means you will get this small stringing over there so likewise the infill percentage will be keep on varying in it and the spot size as i told you the spot size of the laser or the um, uh, UV light. So that will be determined what may be the amount of time required to complete the product and the interval time, the part by temperature, uh, nozzle diameter, path and speed and the scanning speed uh, and exposure time point. These are the some of the product production process parameters over here. So you have to take care of that everything <laughs> before going to print. Sorry, uh, return on investment. So how to calculate the return on investment for your additive manufacturing? So normally, basically, we can calculate a return on investment with the help of some simple formula. The cost of the uh, 3D printer by uh, total uh, total savings in uh, rupees uh, by part into number of part produced per year. Likewise, if you if you make it, you will get your return on investment. So how to find out what may be the total saving? Total saving is variable cost saving plus additional savings say for example we can say what may be the filament cost extra tooling cost so that and all we can reduce it right with the help of this uh, total saving right and additional savings uh, additional saving means uh, time saving build time is reduced because of that uh, we can reduce them uh, we can introduce the new product uh, in a timely manner so we can save that time energy de uh, engineering design savings profit from the increased production and tool savings okay so so all these things we can uh, these are the additional savings which we can get per part okay so by adding the various uh, variable cost plus additional cost you will get in the total savings in it uh, what may be the key performance indicators there will be four key performance indicator in any any additive manufacturing and the quality of the product so quality of the product will determine the 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 output right the output or how the output will come in so if the output is not uh, as per demand. So what we have to do, we have to replace that, right? We need to remove that part in it. Okay. So in that the cost is waste. What we are invested for this material, development cost, material, uh, that um, the print time, uh, design time. So everything will be wasted over in the first part. Second one is production rate. How, ma how many uh, parts has been produced in a, in a single time? So for example, in the beginners, we can produce in a single component, but uh, when you're experienced, you can produce the different components. Say, for example, I, I am saying that uh, a total chessboard can be uh, made it in a, in a, on a single day. Single day, we can make it a total chessboard. Likewise, likewise we, can, we can make it into a complete different uh, uh, com uh, components in the single product, uh, single process itself. So in that way, you can increase the production rate Okay, so by, by reducing the cost in that. Then dimensional precision, how the uh, dimensional stability of your product will be. So that has to be given. And then waste and scrap material, how much amount of uh, filament has been wasted or scrapped. So that is also be taken into consideration. Okay, these are the key performance indicators. Key performance indicators mean these are the indicators which will ensure that whether the product is feasible or not. And these are the commonly available printing software for design manufacturing and your MES, so other analysis and all. And uh, these are the some of the application of your uh, 3D printing in automobile industries. 
so we can say that uh, we can uh, fenders uh, front bumpers bonnets anything we can we can do that with the help of your interior components so all we can uh, doing that with the help of your uh, 3d printing and we have the uh, different very intricate shapes you can see that these are the tires which are innovative tires so there is no need to fill this and uh, these are the designed one so which we can produce us like this uh, in that manifold different manifolds can be produced within a single uh, process okay so likewise we can produce us and uh, mainly used in the medical industries so for example we can say knee joints and all so uh, like uh, ortho orthopedic uh, materials as parts has been produced with the help of your 3d printings then uh, the skull joint the meshes skull meshes or some uh, elbows so all these things we can produce with the help of 3d printing and finally this is very curious we can uh, in the forthcoming years you can print your dosa you can print your uh, food whatever you want by with the help of your 3d printing so this is commercially available now itself you can see in your amazon and other products you can you can get it through that right so you will get your products are there coffee makers coffee designers will be there cake so all this uh, pastry items can be done with the help of the 3d printings and the challenges will be the cost of the equipment will be higher initially but when when it comes uh, when number of printers is increased means the cost will be lower down and the limited materials so yes this is the one of the drawbacks of your additive manufacturing but slowly we are replacing with some carbon fiber filaments wooden filaments met, uh, metal filaments so we are using it right and post processing requirements another tedious process is post processing requirements so how to resolve how to uh, how much amount of time it will take to post processing so how much amount of cost is required so it will require the most of the time it will be uh, on the depends on the post processing only manufacturing cost lack of uh, expertise and the training um, uh, standards available and we can say that uh, software development and uh, recyclability see some of the countries uh, 3d printing has been banned because of uh, product uh, duplicating so that has to be uh, avoided because that will uh, cause us for the risk of litigation or legal implications over there okay so 3d printing job market you can see here so the job market of 3d printing will be uh, 2022 20, uh, 2030 it, the projected growth will be given around 76.17 billion by 2028 so this is projected by us uh, 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 employee labor uh, in, uh, ministry of labor so they they projected that this this much of high amount of uh, Uh, growth will be there in the case of your 3d printing Th these are the major uh, recruiters of 3d printers okay so they are manufacturing as well as the they are recruiting the people for designers modelers 3d printers so r and d so all these things they will take into that so you ca you can consider this as your uh, additional uh, thing and you can you can learn that 3d printing you can you can model your own print okay you can whatever thing you can do you can do that even for biological anything you, uh, you can you can do that and you can become an entrepreneur or you can become a uh, working in a, a very big company like ge and all so all this possible if you are uh, learning 3d printing okay so some of the 3d printers which are available in india so which is cost around uh, from around 15000 to around uh, uh, 1.5 crores the machines are available okay depends on the printer depends on the capability so these are the some of the references